Welcome to the ultimate Excel lookup tutorial where we'll go over the VLOOKUP, the HLOOKUP and all the features on the XLOOKUP from the very basic at level 1 all the way to the hardest at level 5. Let's go! First up we've got the VLOOKUP which basically looks for a figure within a vertical table. So over here in this Excel file which you can download in the description down below you can see that we've got the salesperson and we want to find out what their commission was. So this is the sale amount that they had and these over here are their commissions. So in this case for, for Harley here, we wanna find out that person's commission. So we're just gonna go equals, VLOOKUP, and here it's gonna give you the description of it. Just press the tab key when you start to see it. For the lookup value, so we're looking for Harley in this case, press the comma key. The table array is gonna be the whole range that we're interested in. In our case, it's gonna be this whole table. So we'll just hit the top one, then just press Control shift down arrow and control shift right arrow press the comma key there and now it's going to ask for the column index number basically how a vlookup works is that it goes from the left hand side all the way to the right so as of now the salesperson is the first column and because we're interested in the commission that's going to be not one two three four but the fifth one over here as the commission so we're going to hit a five there comma and we want an exact match so we're just going to go with false press the tab key there close the brackets and hit enter so now you can see that Harley has a commission of 1,200. If you go over here, that's exactly that commission. And what's nice about this formula is that it's dynamic. Suppose I change from Harley Fritz to something like Ivan Hines, which is somebody else in this data set. And you're gonna see that that person's is right here and that number automatically updated as well. While the VLOOKUP makes sense for vertical data, as you can probably imagine, the HLOOKUP makes sense for horizontal data. So let's look into that. Just go to control page down. That's gonna take you to the second tab. And over here, we really have the same data set other than it's laid out horizontally. Now for there, we just wanna find the exact same thing. So the commission for uh, Harley here. So we're just gonna go equals H lookup, press the tab key. And the syntax here is gonna be pretty much the same. So the lookup value is Harley. We'll press the comma. The table array is gonna be this whole table over here. So we're just gonna go control shift down. Control shift right, comma again. The row index number, remember this time it's not the column index, but the row index. And we still want it to be the fifth one. So we're just gonna press the five, comma. And we want an exact match again, close the brackets and hit enter. That's gonna give us the same number as it did with the VLOOKUP. As you can probably imagine, the VLOOKUP is a lot more popular, primarily because data is usually sorted vertically instead of horizontally like this, which honestly is just a bit hard to read. While these two functions can come very handy, they do have some limitations. If you go control page down to the third tab, you'll find over here that the data set has been slightly arranged, where the salesperson is actually all the way on the last column instead of on the first like it was before. Now in this scenario, if we try to do a VLOOKUP, we'll go equals VLOOKUP, press the tab key there, lookup value is Harley, comma. The table array is gonna be this whole area over here, so control shift down, control shift right. The column index number, and this is where we start to have an issue, is that typically the VLOOKUP goes from left to right, but in this case we need to go the other way around because the salesperson is our last column. So suppose to get the commission we just type a minus one say, and then I'm gonna type a false for an exact match, close the brackets, and hit enter here, but unfortunately that's not gonna work because I can't actually do the minus thing, instead it always has to, has to go from left to right. But luckily for us we do have the XLOOKUP to come save us. And you can see it as the VLOOKUP on steroids. So let's go over five different scenarios where it might come handy from easiest all the way to hardest. So going to the Excel file and just where we left off under the VLOOKUP here, which didn't quite work, let's test it out with an XLOOKUP instead. So we'll go equals XLOOKUP, press the tab key. The lookup value is the same Harley, comma, lookup array. And this time we're only gonna select the, this whole column over here. So just press control shift down here comma and the return array will specify that we just want that the commission column so control shift down here close those brackets and hit enter and just like that using the x lookup we don't have that limitation of only going from left to right anymore now moving on to level two of the x lookup and over here we have the exact same data set but instead let's say that as a salesperson i just type something like kenji and you'll notice that the whole Excel formula here breaks down. And the reason for that is that Kenji is actually not on this list. And so it's not really finding a match. 
Now, instead of getting this ugly NA sign, you can modify it to say something that actually makes sense to somebody that's never seen the formula before. So you just press the F2 key to get inside the formula, go towards the very last parenthesis there, and it's gonna say the if not found feature. And here's where we wanna type something like not on the list, close the quotations there and hit enter. And so for someone like Kenji, it's gonna say it's not on the list. However, if I change this to say Ivan Hines, hit enter there, then that commission is gonna automatically update. Nice. Now looking into level three of the XLOOKUP, just go to control page down over here. And in this scenario, you'll find that it's a bit different in that both the sales amount and the commission are the things that we're looking for. So not just one or the other, but actually both. So for this XLOOKUP actually has a feature where if you just type XLOOKUP over here, same lookup value we want, same lookup array, which is gonna be the salesperson over here. But now the big difference is that for the return array, we're not just gonna select the sales amount, but we're actually gonna select both the sales amount and the commission. So control shift down, control shift right, and we'll select both of these columns, close those brackets and hit enter there. Now you'll see that both the sales amount and the commission have updated. And if you look at Harley's, that's the exact same amount here. And if we were to change one of these, say Ivan Hines, then all of a sudden both things are actually gonna change for us and they look just right as well. All right, now moving on to the harder stuff at level four. And here we're gonna be working with a slightly different data set. So go to control page down. The main difference here is that instead of having the salesperson, we're gonna have the company name. So suppose that for instance, we wanna find the sales amount for Nike, but to be honest, it's not exactly called Nike. Instead, it's called Nike Inc. And we might re just remember it as Nike, same thing with Apple, maybe we thought it was just called Apple, but instead it's called Apple EMEA. So let's see if XLOOKUP is able to make that connection for us. So here we're gonna go equals XLOOKUP, press the tab key. The lookup value isn't just gonna be Nike because it's not gonna find it here because it's called Nike Inc. So instead we wanna specify that it's Nike and some other information that we don't quite know. So we're just gonna put this ampersand, put quotations, and we're gonna put the asterisk which basically means that, hey, it's for an undetermined amount of range after Nike as well. And then close the quotations there, comma. The lookup array is gonna be all the company names, so control shift down, comma. The return array, we said we wanna find out the sales amount, so control shift down there, comma. If not found, we don't wanna put anything there, so we'll just press the comma again. And now here for the match mode, we don't want an exact match because that's not really gonna match anything for us. So we're just gonna put that two there wildcard character match is the one that's gonna work for us best here. Close the brackets there and hit enter. Now you'll notice that for Nike, it's giving us a sales amount of 6,000, which seems just about right. So now suppose I change the name over here to something like Zara, then it's gonna be able to determine that it's actually not called just Zara, but instead it's called Zara Fashion, and that's the one we should be looking at. Same thing goes if I type say H&M, that's gonna be able to associate it as well. So this applies to not just company names, obviously, but if you only know the first name of a person or the first few digits of their code, say. And finally, we're heading into level five and congrats if you made it this far. So let's go to control page down over here and we have, have the same old data set. But in this case, the main difference is that we have two criteria to filter by. One being that it has to be this salesperson and secondly, that it has to be in this particular year. Now to do so, we're gonna be able to use the XLOOKUP, but it's gonna be a bit more mixed. So we're just gonna go equals XLOOKUP, press the tab key. Firstly, we wanna find out that it's this salesperson, so we'll hit the comma there. And the lookup array is gonna be that whole range over here, like we've been doing all the way till now. But however, for the return array, this is where it gets a bit more tricky, because we also need to account for the years that they have to be same to this year over here. Now to do so, we're actually gonna put an X, another XLOOKUP inside of that. So we put XLOOKUP, press the tab key. The lookup value in this case, you can't quite see it, but I'm selecting the year over here, comma. The lookup array is gonna be all of the years we have available over here up top, comma. And the return array for us, we're looking for the commission. So that's gonna be all of the data set over here. So just all of the figures inside of that. Close the brackets close the brackets again and hit enter. That should give you Harley Fritz's commission in the year of 2020, which is gonna be this one right over here. Were I to change this, say to 2021, that should move along accordingly to this figure right over here, as is the case. 
So as we've seen, the Excel Cup is a beast, but it does have some limitations. Let's go to control page down over here. And you notice that this time around, Harley has made more than one sale. And so we wanna account for that person's commission with multiple sales. Now to do so, we have the exact same formula that we used earlier, but the problem is that it's only accounting for one sale. It's only really accounting for this one in particular, instead of accounting for all four of them in 2019. And that's the problem with XLOOKUP or the lookup functions in general. And it's that if they have a match, then they're only gonna pick the very first one and ignore all of the other ones below. So suppose we wanna find out how much this person earned in commission in 2019, not just for one sale, but for all of their sales. Now to do so, we're gonna have to get a bit more creative and use a different formula here by ditching the lookup functions. So let's give this a try. We're gonna have to use what's known as the filter option first. So we're just gonna type equals filter, press the tab key. And so we want the array to be all of the figures for us. So all of the data that we're interested in. So all of these here, comma, and we want them to include firstly the, the name. So this range over here, all of the names that we've got, we want them to equal to Harley's. Now close those brackets and hit enter. And what that's gonna give us is basically all of this data over here. The reason it gives us everything is because we haven't quite filtered by the year as well yet, right? So instead, we're gonna have to get back inside of it. At the very beginning, we're gonna put another filter this time around just for the year. So we'll go equals filter, press the tab key. And for the array, we're fine with this being the array, comma. And under include is where we wanna do the year feature. So we're gonna select all of the years here, make them equal to the 2019 year, close those brackets and hit enter. And now you'll see that it's filtered down only to the 2019 figures and it's selecting all four of them. So all of these four over here for Harley, which makes sense. If I change this to 2020 say, then it's gonna change to these four over here. But we're still not quite finding the sum here. Instead, we just have these four numbers, which is kind of hard to justify to our boss, say if we send something like this. So instead, at the very beginning, we're just gonna put a sum, press the tab key, which is gonna sum all of those figures for us, close the brackets and hit enter. And that's gonna make it look nice and clean for us. So this right here we're looking at is the sum of these four. This is gonna change dynamically, say I put 2022. That's gonna change to these four over here. For more on Excel, check out this link over here to learn the biggest mistakes to avoid using Excel or this other link over here to take our Excel for business and finance course. Hit that like and that subscribe button if you liked it and I'll catch you in the next one.